ask you, um, since you are sort of the Martha Stewart of fox hunting, <laughs> you've been uh, a professional for 20 years here in Middleburg, uh, is that I've right? I've been hunting almost almost 20 years. Didn't really know what was going on, didn't know anything about the hounds or the scenting, you know. Um, so it, it was a learning curve, but thank goodness I was on good horses. I love fox hunting because it's a non-competitive sport, you know, which I think a lot of people come to it later in life because they're kind of done competing. You know, they're... Just, I'm in that boat. Yeah, you can I just enjoy go it. out and have a good time and you have to be safe, but, you know, you're not going to a, an event that's scheduled and there's not really pressure. You know, it's, it's a very different kind of thing. It's a very fast, fun trail ride, cross-country course, all wrapped up in one. Mm -hmm. And you get to wear pretty clothes, too. <laughs> and it can be very slow, and there can be no scent. And, you know, you can stand around and walk around for three hours, you know, and it's just whatever the scenting conditions are and whatever the fox decides to do, you know, you're sort of at the mercy of nature. Mm -hmm. So Connecting with nature, and that's, yeah. that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. um, just all the sounds and smells of being out in the open and... Um, I'm an urban fox hunter living in Fairfax, so coming out to the country is mm -hmm. a real treat. Fox hunting's been a part of our history. You know, when you travel around Virginia and you hear that George Washington slept here, mm -hmm. um, he probably fox hunted in between every place there he slept. Mm -hmm. um, he was an avid fox hunter. So this is a sport that's been around uh, since uh, the beginning of our nation. Right. So it's, there's quite a history and a tradition there that I think it's fun when you saddle up, if you go to Williamsburg and visit the saddlery. Things haven't changed all that much right. in our yeah. equipment. Well, Malty's trying to steal the show here, and, my, <laughs> and that leads to my next question, is what makes a good fox hunter? Um, a good fox hunter is um, a horse you feel safe on, and it doesn't matter breed, size, age, um, if you haven't hunted, you need to be on a horse that has hunted a good three or four seasons and knows its job and is recommended by whoever knows the horse. Um, not every horse will make a good fox hunter. Um, there are a lot more show horses and event horses than there are fox hunters. And um, they don't necessarily have to jump very well. We don't jump very high. Um, they need to be controllable in a large group that is going fast and is very excited. And the horse's herd instinct takes over and they, I always say about 70% of your training goes out the window when you go hunting. So you need to kind of let go of control sometimes. Um, and a horse that has that sort of following mentality, they don't want to leave, they don't need to pass anybody. Um, works well because that's what you're doing following. You're not going by yourself, you're not leading. I'm fairly new to, to fox hunting and um, one of the things I found very interesting was the idea of these different fields and I was hoping you could explain uh, to folks that what these different fields are comprised of, what that means. Yeah, the first field is the, the people that want to stay up closest to the huntsman and they have a, every field has a field master, a rider, um, that leads them and they stay with that person and go where that person goes. So the first field usually jumps. So they're going the, usually the fastest and they jump. That's how they keep up with the hounds and the huntsmen. Um, and so that's a group of, with us with Orange County, it's probably between 30 and 50 people um, in Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. The second field, which is also called Hilltoppers, um, but sometimes hilltoppers are the third field. Second field doesn't jump. Might go as fast. Um, they don't jump. They might jump a little log that's in the way on the trail. Um, so, and it doesn't matter what age you are, what, how you, what your horse is, you just go whatever field that you're comfortable with. Um, and so you want, we want everybody to be safe. And if you get tired in the first field halfway through the day and you want to move back to second field, that's fine. Um, the hilltoppers, like if it's a third field, they tend to maybe not canter, maybe just walk and trot. And the field masters know the land and they know the territory, and so they and they usually know where the foxes are going, sort of. 
And so they know how to get from field to field, and property to property without going the long way. And, um, and so everybody's listening for the hounds and sometimes we lose sight of the hounds, but um, the field masters are there to guide people and stay off of land we're not supposed to be on or, you know, they know the trails, they know where to go. So we're not just trail bashing. It's nice to have everybody, you know, looking out for each other. If the field master looks back and makes sure everybody's still there, you know, so um, it's, and every field master is different, you know, some sort of stand and watch a little bit more and depends on the hounds too and the huntsman and how close they, he wants the field master to him or, for, or her. Um, and the territory sometimes is tight. Sometimes you don't have 200 acres to you know, spread out on. Mm. Sometimes it's in the woods and it's in the trails. And So you go wherever the fox leads you. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very interesting. When we talk about fox hunting, it seems like it's really more like fox chasing because yeah. Yeah, rarely... We don't want to kill the fox. You no. know, that's not the object of the game, you know, because we, we want to take care of the wildlife and we want them to still be around. You know, we, our hunt, huntsmen and our landowners feed foxes and they give them dewormer. We watch, we know where the foxes are and the huntsman knows and he'll, he'll give you dewormer if he, we know the fox has mange or something. So mm. we're trying to keep the wildlife healthy, you know, and we know if it's a hard winter, the foxes suffer a little bit. And so we try to feed them, um, you know, if the mouse population is down or whatever, you know, we, we try to take care of them. I have a silly question based on something my kids say, and we're hearing all these wildlife noises in the background, but oh. What does the fox say? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> it, uh, it'll, you'll hear foxes, uh, I'll hear them in town if they're um, hunting around in, at night. You know, it's a very sort of a blood curdling scream noise. Um, and it's not, a, you can tell it's not a cat, um, but that's, you know, if they're usually later, early, early, early spring, later winter, you know, they're, it's their mating season and they're, they're out. And the season, explain um, to folks how the whole fox hunting season works, because you're not hunting in June. No, no. Here, it's, we tend to hunt when the scenting, try to hunt when the scenting is best. And the, you know, the fox leaves its scent on the ground, and depending on the temperature and the moisture level, if it's hotter, the scent will rise. And the hounds are bigger than the fox, but their, you know, their nose is about 12 inches or less off the ground. So if the scent is five feet in the air, the hounds can't smell the fox and they can't follow because they're scent hounds. So we hunt from September through March. Um, the staff, the hunt staff, the huntsmen and the whippers in start taking puppies and, and older hounds together out in August and for short periods of time early in the morning um, when it's cooler. And, you know, when it's dry and hot, it's tougher scenting, but our hounds do really well. And, you know, then it's wet, you know, it's sometimes it's too wet and we can't park in a field, so we have to cancel. But that's really good scenting days because the moisture is holding the scent. So that's, the season is based on that and on um, somewhat on the fox's breeding schedule. They, they have, um, the vixens have kits in the spring, and so we don't want to hunt. You know, we don't want to chase pregnant foxes. So we let them have their babies and let them grow up in the spring and summer. And it's just, in the summer, it's just too hot. I mean, if you're galloping around in the heat, it's, it's harder on the horses and you have to have some break, you know. It's, and the ground gets so hard. The ground gets too. hard, but you know, it can be hard in the winter too. I mean, you can galloping mm -hmm. on frozen ground. So, but you know, it's, it's, the scenting is much better when it's cold. Oh, great. Well, I'd love to talk about clothes, but we may save attire for another day. Uh -huh. But there, um, I tease Kristen about being the Martha Stewart of fox hunting because there's a lot of um, propriety in fox hunting about what you wear and what your horse wears, proper attire when you're braided, mm -hmm. what kind of gloves you're wearing, what color jacket, what color tie. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of boots you wear. Um, it's very particular. So those of you who like to shop, fox hunting might be <laughs> something you'd like to try. <laughs> you see that it, today I get a kick out of going to the grocery store and seeing you know, folks, everybody's wearing these leggings 
and then riding boots, what looks like riding boots because it's the fashion now. And yeah. I think, well, I have my riding boots. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm not going to wear them to the grocery store. <laughs> right? yeah. or, or whatever, but uh, equestrian couture is yeah. sort of in these days. Yeah.